We welcome you to the celebration of Mass on this, the first Sunday in Lent 2021. This is a very special Sunday for us in Barbados as we are going through a national lockdown, a time of reflection and of healing. So we welcome you who are joining with us in worship virtually, especially members of our parish. We welcome the members of the international community who always tune in and support us both with their prayers and with their gifts. We pray that this Lenten season may be a blessing to all of you. Our opening hymn for this Mass Four hundred and twenty four. Four, two, four. Be materials of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed Lord and Father, we have assembled in your name and in fellowship with one another. Enable us by your grace to offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, to proclaim and respond to your holy word. Teach us to pray for your world and your church. Grant that we, confessing our sins, may worthily offer to you our souls and bodies as a living sacrifice, and eat and drink of your spiritual food in this holy sacrament. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts so open. All hearts be open, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthy by the pride of your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. 
Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit into the wilderness and was tempted by Satan. Come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, O Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. reading taken from the Word of God, written in Genesis chapter 9, verses 8 to 17. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you, and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Psalm is number 25, verses 1 through to verse 9.
A reading taken from the Word of God, written in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 18 to 22. Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. This is the word of the Lord. Him now one hundred and nineteen one one nine. The Lord be with you. A continuation of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. And he was in the de desert for forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, 
proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the gospel of Christ. coming up out of the water he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him and a voice came from heaven you are my son the beloved with whom I am well pleased in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen St. Mark on this first Sunday in Lent takes us back to the earliest days of Jesus' ministry and introduces us to Jesus through his baptism. My late teacher in religion, Dr. Robert Belgrave, would always remind us that whenever you read a text, always check the context of the text, a statement you've heard me say so many times before. The geopolitical context of the moment in which this event occurred was that the people were in a high state of expectation. They were looking for the return of the Messiah to free and liberate them from those who were ruling in their land. They were an oppressed people. A people under occupation can often become desperate. But this set of people had a religious hope that inspired them and carried them through some of the darkest periods of their life. With this heightened national consciousness and looking for the end of days, the message of John to repent and, in the words of the text, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight, was one that they all heard. And it caused many to come for baptism of repentance to ritually cleanse themselves and make themselves ready for the new age to dawn. Transformational leaders always emerge out of a time of crisis as they usher in a new age. It is at this time that Jesus comes to his cousin to be baptized by him and in doing so he associates himself with not just this radical fringe group but also the national aspirations of his people and so Jesus was not just there to be baptized and nothing else it was for him about being with his community, his people, and their moment in time. Mark does not go into any long explanation of John's reaction 
to his cousin coming for baptism or his dialogue with Jesus over the event. He simply names John as the one who officiated in this act. Mark focuses exclusively on Jesus. As soon as the baptism is over, a magical moment occurs and there's a tearing open of the heavens. The, the Greek of the text is very expressive. And in that moment of coming up out of the water, and a binon, the Spirit of God descends on him, catabinon, like a dove. There is an ascent and a descent in the same moment. Mark's gospel is unique. It is unique in expressing this moment because this manifestation seems to be only experienced or understood by Jesus himself. The text said, He saw the heavens open. This is seemingly, therefore, not a communal experience. But with this outpouring of God's Spirit upon him in the form of a dove, and note that this same symbol is found after the flood, and the dove signaled a new beginning on the earth. Because a dove was sent out and that dove, the last one to go out, finally returns with an olive leaf in his mouth, showing that the earth having been completely bathed or washed or cleansed in water was now ready for a new beginning. And so the outpouring of the Spirit upon God's Son in the form of a dove, also spoke of a new beginning. And with the descent from heaven of the dove, also comes a voice out of heaven. It is a voice of affirmation. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Just about three nights ago on Thursday night, we were blessed to have the Most Reverend Dr. John Holder, retired Archbishop of the Church of the Province of the West Indies and a former Bishop of this diocese, to lead us in the first of our weekly reflections for this Lent of 2021. And this year we're looking at baptism. During the question and answer session which came at the end, which all over 350 people stayed for, one of the things he reminded us of was that baptism is not just about the baby we're bringing to the font. It is also as much about the parents and the godparents and I hasten to add, the faithful gathered there as well. So for us, baptism is not just about the individual, it is also about the community. How absolutely affirming it must have been to Jesus to hear the most personal words of affirmation coming from his Father in heaven. Our liturgy of baptism carries within that service powerful words of affirmation to all children who come to those waters. It, however, is up to the parents, but especially to the fathers, to constantly echo those words of value and affirmation to their children throughout their life. 
And this is especially needed as they prepare for or are going through moments of doubt about their identity, their self-worth, or purpose for being in the world. And note that Mark places this divine affirmation immediately before introducing us to the temptations of Jesus. Sadly, we lost two young people in our nation recently to what appears to have been an act of self-harm. It is very easy for us in these times of high stress and anxiety to focus exclusively on the adults and to forget the fragility of our youth. Lent is a perfect time to speak words of positivity into the lives of all of our young people. And in this most powerful act, it will have its greatest effect when it comes from the lips of fathers and of godfathers. You see, you never know just when a word might be uttered at the right time to save a life or spoken by the right person just before a catastrophic event occurs. Since St. Mark wants us to reflect on the baptism of Jesus as both a uniquely singular and personal event as well as an act of identification with a community of faith, it is worth holding these two themes as we enter into this holy season of Lent. Lent is often described as a journey. And the quality of any and every journey depends on the quality of the roads on which we travel. I'm pleased to say that I grew up in the country. I grew up among sugarcane fields and fields of food crops. And everyone here in Barbados knows what is called a cart road. We know what it looks like. It is a often shortest path between two villages and therefore it connects stories and people and history. It is sometimes an easy access road to the nearest highway or main road. But it is also for us a place of opportunity and sometimes temptation by day and certainly a place of danger by night. You see, it is often a narrow trap of unpaved road over which people or vehicles have so frequently traveled that two parallel worn patches of grass emerge divided by an untouched greener patch in the middle. In Lent, we travel this single road, but on two parallel but equally important tracks. And we have to straddle them simultaneously. One track I would like to call the journey inward. For Lent is a time to lock ourselves alone in the closet of our heart with God and spend quality time being refreshed by God's forgiving love and unmerited favor. 
At the same time, we are encouraged to engage the communities of faith and the wider community. We are to be charitable indeed, but in this time of pandemic, we must not forget to be charitable with our words, words of support and encouragement to others. You see, at times, words can, in some cases, be worth more than money. Words can bring healing, and words can also bring hope. This is how we live out our baptismal covenant in Lent. We cherish and nurture and affirm the fact that we are special people to God. We are His beloved, people upon whom God's Spirit rests. But simultaneously we affirm the dignity and worth of the other. Traveling faithfully on these parallel tracks will lead us closer on the road to our God. The God who cautions us that as much as we have acted charitably to the least of these, our brothers and sisters, we do it as unto him. And so may the divine assistance remain and abide with us always as we journey closer to him and closer to each other this Lent. And I want to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, to whom we ascribe this justly due, all might, majesty, dominion, and power, henceforth and forevermore. Amen. great boldness and faith, we confess the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God. Intercession Form B. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That and we in all may be one. And in the Anglican cycle of prayer, the province of Central Africa, with its 15 dioceses, including the Diocese of Botswana, 
Malawi, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That they may be justice and peace for all Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may Give to the departed eternal rest. Let the light of shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come and share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our needs and those of others. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords to your will, and the good things which we dare not, or in our blindness cannot ask, grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us therefore confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not loved ourselves as we ought. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us we may delight in your will and walk in your way to the glory of your name. Amen. And so may Almighty God have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We are the body of Christ. By the one spirit we are all baptized into one body and have all been made to drink of the one spirit. The peace of the Lord be always with you. While we have time, let us do good to all people, to those who are far off and those who are near, but especially to those who are of the household of faith. We offer to him 457, 457.
Father, we offer to you these gifts which you have given us, this bread, this wine, this money. With them we offer ourselves, our lives, and our work to become, through your Holy Spirit, reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice. As this bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ, so may we and all your people become channels of your love through the same Christ, our Lord. As we offer this Mass on the first Sunday in Lent 2021, we give God thanks for the grace of coming to this day. We pray for the international community gripped in the pandemic, for our island home and nation Barbados, for this moment of complete lockdown, and for the unity of the church, especially as we gather virtually in prayer and in praise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father Almighty, everlasting God. For you bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast. That fervent in prayer and in works of mercy and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, all creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness comes from you your Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord, whom you sent to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. We therefore bring you these gifts, and we ask you to make them holy by the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who offered himself in obedience to your will, the perfect sacrifice for all mankind. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, for the remembrance of me. Using the third acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ Jesus is Lord. 
He has set us free from the law of sin and death. In his name alone is our salvation. Father, calling to mind the death your son endured for our salvation, his glorious resurrection and ascension, his continual intercession for us in heaven, and looking for his coming again in glory, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and life-giving sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering, and grant that we who eat and drink these holy gifts may be filled with your Holy Spirit and become one body in Christ and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. May he make us a perpetual offering to you and enable us in communion with Blessed Mary, Blessed St. Michael, our patron, and the whole company of heaven to share in the inheritance of your saints. With him and in him and through him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, in songs of everlasting praise. And now, as our Savior Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, our Father in heaven. This is the true bread which comes down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. Draw near and receive the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ, with faith and thanksgiving. We do not presume to come to this, your table, most merciful Father, trusting in our own righteousness, but only in your boundless mercy. For we are not even worthy to gather up the crumbs under your table. But you are the Lord, ever the same, ever merciful, Grant, therefore, Lord of grace and love, that we may so eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and drink his blood, that with bodies and souls made clean from every stain of sin, we may evermore dwell in him and he in us.
let us give thanks. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you've given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit. Let us in a moment of silence bring before God our nation. Let's pray that God may heal us, renew us, refresh us. Pray for the families who are grieving, loss of loved ones. Pray that God may give to us the grace to persevere. That he may bless us this Lent and give to us a most holy Lent. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves and take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this Lenten season and always. Amen. We're closing hymn 114, 114.